With their incredibly rich colors and deep blacks, you've probably heard people speak very highly of OLED monitors before. But are OLED monitors really as good as they are made out to be? To be honest, I feel like OLED monitors are overrated right now. But why? There is a lot to unpack. So let's dive in without further ado. To better understand the pros and cons of OLED monitors, let's first discuss other panel types. Nowadays, there are three main panel types commonly used in monitors. TN, VA, and IPS. All of these panels have their own advantages and disadvantages. TN panels. TN panels are known for their narrow viewing angles, poor color accuracy, and poor contrast ratios. They require you to look directly towards the monitor, as the colors would distort otherwise. They are favored by Valorant and Counter-Strike esports players, but for general consumers, they are no longer viable options. VA panels. VA panels offer better colors and wider viewing angles compared to TN panels, and their biggest pro is the high contrast ratio. However, their response times are generally slower, and lower quality models may suffer from a blurring issue known as ghosting. They are widely used in curved monitors and offer budget-friendly options. IPS panels. IPS panels provide the best viewing angles and color accuracy. Their contrast ratios are lower compared to VA panels, so they might perform a bit worse in dark scenes. Their response times are generally good and they are the most popular panel type in the market. But a good quality IPS panel is more expensive, and the color accuracy might pose an issue in some lower quality models. If you're looking for a more detailed guide on monitors, I recommend checking out the monitor guide video on the channel. I don't want to make the video unnecessarily long. Now let's talk about OLEDs. To make a basic comparison against the TN, VA, and IPS panels I've just discussed, OLEDs are almost like hybrids that combine the strengths of all these panel types. They are much faster than TN panels, providing response times as low as 0.01 milliseconds. They have better color accuracy than IPS panels and a higher contrast ratio than VA panels. Plus, their viewing angles are very wide too. Later in the video, I'll dive deeper into these topics. But I have to remind you, yes, OLEDs are technically impressive panels. However, they are on this video because they also carry some significant issues. It is very important that you make your purchasing decision with these issues in mind. Before we dive into these OLEDs issues, let's quickly talk about another kind of risk. The risk of your personal data ending up in the wrong hands. I'm talking about data brokers. Ever wonder why you keep getting spam calls or emails, even with Gmails or your message apps filters? They are likely the reason why. You can track them down and request the removal of your data, but repeating that for every data broker can be a challenge. Breaches like Equifax, which leaked sensitive information of more than 100 million people, or the PlayStation Network breach, which exposed the passwords of 77 million accounts, show why you need to stay vigilant. That's why I recommend today's video's sponsor, Incogni. Incogni contacts all of these data brokers on your behalf to remove you from their lists with just a click. Simply create an account, specify the data you want removed, allow Incogni to contact data brokers on your behalf, and then watch as Incogni works to get your information off those lists. Plus, with the family and friends plan, you can extend Incogni's benefits to four other people. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, feel free to try it out for yourself and get a full refund if you aren't satisfied. Use code MYSTERIOUSTECH at the link below or go to incogni.com slash MYSTERIOUSTECH to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Take back ownership of your data today. Now back to the video. The working principle. The fundamental thing that sets OLEDs apart is how they handle lighting. In other display technologies, there's a light source that covers the entirety of the display called the backlight. Although in some displays, this lighting can be controlled regionally thanks to a technology called local dimming, the lights on the screen cannot be controlled at the pixel level. As a result, you may notice a bluish-gray color in areas that are supposed to be completely black. However, in OLED panels, as every pixel produces its own light, no such backlighting is necessary. This allows for a single pixel that is supposed to be black to be turned off entirely. That's how OLED screens produce true blacks. This allows for the contrast ratio, which is typically around 1,000 to 1 for IPS panels and 3,000 to 1 on VA panels, to be virtually infinite on OLED screens. This leads to an incredible color depth when watching movies or playing games. But as I've just mentioned, these improvements don't come without a cost. The burn-in issue. The most widely discussed issue of OLED panels is the burn-in issue. This issue occurs when a pixel operates at the same color and brightness over a prolonged period. 
Over time, this pixel can degrade, leading to permanent marks, almost like a stamp. For example, if you are always watching the same TV channel on an OLED television, the static logo at the corner may eventually appear as a permanent mark. Another factor that can trigger burn-in issues is heat. This risk is especially high for OLED monitors used in hot environments. The underlying cause of this is each pixel producing its own light on OLED screens. In other words, pixel-based lighting leads to heat production and degradation. Unfortunately, this is the main reason why many people planning to buy an OLED change their minds, but manufacturers develop some technical solutions to prevent this from happening. One of the most well-known methods is called pixel refreshing. This system essentially tries to prevent burn-in by subtly shifting the pixels at regular intervals. While this process operates in the background without being noticed, in some cases, it may temporarily interrupt screen use for a few minutes. Besides this, cooling the OLED panel more effectively or lowering the power consumption are among other factors that can reduce the risk of burn-in. The maximum brightness issue. OLED screens are distinguished by their incredible contrast ratios. However, they lag behind when it comes to maximum brightness. They generally offer peak brightness values between 250 and 350 nits, levels that are more commonly found on budget monitors. This can be quite disappointing in devices that are this expensive. If you are planning to use the monitor in a bright environment, I recommend paying close attention to this detail. Text clarity issue. The underlying cause of this issue is once again the pixel lighting system, but the main problem has more to do with the sub-pixel layout. As you know, each pixel is essentially made of three colors, red, green, and blue. These sub-pixels produce the colors and images on screen by turning on and off depending on the scene. In OLED panels, the arrangement of these sub-pixels is different compared to traditional panels. Due to this distinct arrangement, the text on the screen can sometimes not look clear or sharp, Specifically, when the shapes of the characters do not align well with the sub-pixel structure or are not properly optimized, the text can appear blurry or unclear. There are text improvement technologies such as ClearType for Windows, but they don't provide a definite solution. If your job is centered around writing or reading text, I advise that you stay away from OLED monitors. But if you still want to use an OLED, I recommend looking for models that have good text clarity. Otherwise, your eyes might tire faster when reading for extended periods, and you might experience headaches. The price issue. It is simply horrifying. OLED monitors are being sold for very high prices because they are expensive to manufacture and are recent technologies. The availability of different variants also drives prices even higher. Yes, prices do get lower as time goes on, but they still remain inaccessible for most people. Furthermore, considering the technical issues I've mentioned earlier, it may not be a sensible choice to buy an OLED monitor at this time. In short, you need to weigh the pros and cons before buying an OLED. OLED variants, WOLED, QD OLED, and Tandem OLED. As the technology is new, there are different variants of OLED screens available in the market. These three main variants, WOLED, QD OLED, and Tandem OLED, were developed to address these fundamental issues. These variants may play an important role in deciding which OLED you want to buy. For the most part, these differences are due to variations in sub-pixel layout. I'll simply explain these differences without going too deep into the technical details. W OLED. W OLED is an OLED technology developed by LG. In addition to the standard RGB layout, a white subpixel is also used. This allows for higher brightnesses, especially in white tones. However, this may have a slightly negative effect on color accuracy and saturation. If you are buying the monitor with the intent of reading or writing text, the text clarity of W OLEDs is generally better than QD OLEDs. It's also important to keep in mind that W OLED panels are generally more affordable compared to QD OLEDs. QD OLED. QD OLED was developed by Samsung. In this panel, the subpixel layout follows the standard RGB arrangement. However, there are two key differences. Firstly, the OLED emission layer itself uses blue light instead of white. This allows for the production of more accurate and vibrant colors. The second difference is in the layer that designates the colors. While traditional panels use a color filter, QD OLEDs use a QD layer, also known as a quantum dot layer. Quantum dot is a special layer consisting of nanocrystals. And thanks to this layer, color performance can significantly increase. This is where the phrase quantum dot that we see on monitors comes from. QD OLED panels are outstanding in terms of color performance and are great options for general usage. However, as I've just mentioned, text clarity can lag behind that of W OLEDs. In addition, QD OLEDs are usually more expensive. 
Tandem OLED. Tandem OLED is a technology developed by LG. Essentially, it is formed by laying two or more OLED layers on top of each other. This significantly increases the brightness measured in nits. One of the biggest drawbacks of OLEDs has been their low maximum brightnesses. Tandem OLEDs largely solve this issue. Moreover, thanks to this technology, power consumption decreases and the panel heats up less, so the need for cooling decreases as well. In addition, as the load is split between multiple layers, the lifespan of the panel is also extended. Of course, such a technology that solves most of OLED screen's drawbacks cannot be expected to be cheap. Tandem OLEDs are very pricey and have limited usage areas. However, I should add that it has only recently started to become more widespread. The visual quality of OLEDs is extraordinary. Even rewatching some content you've seen before using an OLED is a whole other experience. In fact, if you look at an OLED display just one time at a tech store, other panels may suddenly start looking dull in comparison. If you have the budget for it, but are hesitant because of these issues, I actually recommend not testing one at all, because once you see an OLED in action, it might be very hard to go back to other panels. The panel's response time and speed are also good, making it an enticing option for gamers, especially when paired with the strong color performance. To summarize, one of the biggest issues is the burn-in, which can be caused by heat or pixel degradation from constant lighting. Additionally, the maximum brightness of OLEDs may not be sufficient for brightly lit environments. Another drawback is that many OLED panels suffer from poor text clarity. If you plan to use the monitor for writing or reading text, you should research models designed specifically for that purpose. And of course, one of the biggest disadvantages is the prices of OLEDs, which are still very high. So let's ask our main question. Are OLEDs overrated? While the answer depends on your environment and use case, generally speaking, yes, they are somewhat overrated. While there are many excellent monitors with VA and IPS panels, OLED monitors are primarily aimed at enthusiasts. Recommending an OLED to everyone doesn't make much sense due to these issues I've talked about. If you're asking, okay, then is OLED my only option if I want saturated colors and a good color performance? No, mini LED monitors provide a good alternative in this regard. Mini LED monitors. If your priority is high visual quality, but you don't have the budget for an OLED, monitors with mini LED backlighting will be more than sufficient for most users. For your use case, a mini LED monitor with a good quality VA or IPS panel can really provide a great experience. After OLEDs, mini LED monitors offer the best local dimming. While OLED illuminates each pixel individually, mini LED monitors use a large number of local dimming zones to control brightness across the screen. Moving on to their advantages, mini LEDs can reach a way higher maximum brightness. While OLEDs usually display a brightness of about 350 nits, it is possible to go up to 1000 nits or even higher in mini LED panels. Reaching 1000 nits in the right scene, especially with HDR supported content, provides a truly impressive viewing experience. Also, mini LED monitors are usually cheaper than OLEDs and do not have chronic issues such as burn in. So you're getting a more durable and longer lasting product for the price. In summary, many technologies are often overhyped. So for now, it is better to approach OLED monitors with caution. But what are your thoughts? Don't hesitate to comment down below. All right, let's wrap up the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If not, feel free to dislike. Stay mysterious until the next video. Take care and bye.